Hey everyone, welcome to our live movie review for Godzilla Minus One, which released in theaters in December or in the US in December and will hit streaming soon. Joining me today is award winning science fiction and fantasy artist Bob Eggleton, who is also a longtime fan of Godzilla and a longtime um, artist as well. And he's done some, some work with Godzilla. Hi Welcome, there. Bob. Hi there. Good to, see, good to be here. Great. And here's a piece of Bob's art, which I absolutely love and wanted to make sure you all got a chance to see before we kind of dive into things. So Godzilla, Godzilla Minus One features a young kamikaze pilot in a post-war Japan that is being ravaged by this fearsome new creature that locals call Godzilla. There will be spoilers in this review, so just be prepared. And I think kind of in a way that's probably why some of you are here, because you just want to talk about the film and you want to hear about the film as well. So as Bob and I chat, be sure to add some questions into the chat if you have any, and we will be sure to get to them as we go. So Bob, thanks for coming. And hey, why don't you kind of kick things off by sharing with people a little bit about yourself and and you know your familiarity with with Godzilla? Well, I, I yeah, sure. I uh, have been a Godzilla fan since 1966. My mother got me this thing called the Godzilla Game. It was by Ideal Toys, and it was a board game. It was 69 cents. I mean, I was in, I loved little the cheap things. It was great, and I just fell in love with it. I said, "This is I got to find this beast." And so I went to see the movies a lot in the 1970s when they ran them as matinees at the local mom and pop things, things like. King Kong versus Godzilla, Godzilla versus the Thing, and Monster Zero, and all that kind of stuff. They had all those, and really, I was kind of, um, you know, really into Godzilla from the beginning. And then, as time moved along, I he he came back in 1984, and we got all excited about him again. And then. I started getting into some artwork for him in the 1990s after, you know, I, I've been very busy in science fiction artwork and science fiction illustrations and stuff like that. But I always saw Godzilla as kind of part of that whole thing, you know, because it's 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 science fiction and he's a, a result of an atomic mutation and his interation, his 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 his. Uh, versions of him through the years have kept him alive. I mean, he is apparently the most franchise film character now, straightly now, Guinness Book of World Records apparently has confirmed that with the new movie. And um, he uh, he's, he's changed so much. He went from terrifying monster to kind of like a superhero to like to something else, to, to being this, this terrifying creature again. And then he became the defender of earth again and even though he didn't like us, he defended us. Um, and uh, then, you know, the whole legendary series came along, which uh, which re just brought Godzilla into the mainstream. Like, you know, and we're looking at Godzilla X Kong, the new empire coming out in a few weeks. And that's getting yeah. a good buzz. And but they really did a one marvelous job with the, this uh, with uh, with uh, with Godzilla minus one, because uh it is probably the second best Godzilla film I've ever seen. And that's is yeah. let's put the first one up as the top one. Okay. So everybody yeah. can agree on that. I'll but, have to agree with you on that one as well. So, you know, given the long history of Godzilla and the various iterations of Godzilla over the years, you know, what what do you think Godzilla minus one is really about when you get down to it? It's not just about post-war Japan recovery. What do you think? What What is it really about this film? I, I think it's about the people. I think it's about, there. there is the post-war thing, there is the recovery, but it's a people movie. And you can, somebody reviewed it and said, you could take Godzilla out of it and still have a beautiful post-war, World War II movie. And that's pretty special. I mean, and we fell in love with the characters. That was what was really nice. The human characters in it, which typically take a side seat to the monsters in the other, other Godzilla movies yeah. we've seen. These ones really were, you love them, you, you felt for them, uh, you cry for them at one point because you, you understand what they're dealing with. They're dealing with a completely uh, obliterated nation that has been defeated, conquered, defeated, whatever. And now 
this thing comes along and it's just going to, it, it, it's going to be even more of a terror again. And uh, yeah, and I think it's, I think it's a statement. There's a statement on, on human strengths and how people, you know, want to, uh, they, they want to prevail. They want to prevail. They want to do something right. Uh, there, there's a beautiful scene in the movie where um, Doc is uh he noda he's he's stating everybody here's how we're going to defeat godzilla and he talks about how for far too long this nation has treated life cheaply it has cheated life and they and he brought up the whole kamikaze thing he brought up the whole he said it's been cheap that now we are going to defend we're going to defend things and it's yeah. a wonderful scene it is a scene that stands out in my mind even more than the monster scenes um and um and you felt like you saying you know he he this this actor is absolutely fabulous and uh right. i think the whole cast the whole and the whole cast worked really well together and they had a terrific chemistry on uh, they were um you know wonderful to um to 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 watch to watch them acting was was a wonderful thing and they're totally likable everyone you liked them yeah, I agree. The cast was a superb choice across the board. All of the characters were really compelling. Um, I loved how the film really started out with the with the kamikaze pilot landing on the small Japanese island. And you get this quiet time with him and and getting to know him as as a person and some of the fears and some of the anxieties that he has and then how his comrades on the island um kind of react to him landing there and being there when he really shouldn't be right and, and he, he was sort of he was making a state he realized that this was they were on they were on the end of the war it was the end of the war yeah. so they were they knew one life one attack is not going to make anything a difference no. and so he literally started realizing the value of life so he he kind of invented oh you know my plane developed a problem and then okay he lands there and touchy bonna goes we can't find a problem with your plane and, and they sort of get a little bit of a suspect suspicion starts and then at the same time, that's when the Godzillasaurus shows up, and he's the premutated monster that you see, and he's kind of a seagoing, um, kind of a T-Rexy kind of thing with these giant spikes. And uh, then, uh, of course, you know he obliterates the entire uh, garrison. He just obliterates the entire camp, yeah. except for two guys, except for for Koichi and for Tachibana. And um, and then you know Tachibana's always held it against him that that he could have you know that he he could have done something he didn't because it was you know he didn't get to his plane enough to shoot at the Godzillasaurus. And right. so he, he was paralyzed, absolutely paralyzed with fear when this thing came down. And um and you know and it that plays out later in the film. Uh and it's it's sort of a tale of it's a little bit of survivor guilt along with um you know, a guy that's kind of like realizes he just doesn't want to be part of this anymore. And that's brought up several times um once when he's on the boat when he's on the boat later on and there's one kid on the boat goes oh you know i wish the war had gone on longer and he grabs him and says no you don't like yeah, no. you know, like and that that these are powerful things they were saying and um you know I, it, it's really interesting how that played in japan too uh but but it struck me and that's the stuff i remember i mean i love the godzilla sequences and they're stunning visual effects but I think that the human stuff, the interaction with the people really right. struck me as, as something that uh, was just incredible, actually. Yeah, I think the human element in this film put it definitely above a lot of the past versions of Godzilla. Um, the human element, I mean, you you really cared about every character in this film you know, whoever they were, they all felt like real and interesting and important people, even though, it, and because I think it was the tale of the small lives in Japan, just the regular people like you and me, and they told it in such a great way and, and really illustrated the loss that the nation and the people and the families all all shouldered at that I mean, moment. You saw that entire field of that just wrecked homes, just destroyed yeah. rats who were camping out with what they could find. And of course he gets he gets given little Akiko. 
and now he's kind of going to have to raise her. And um, and I thought she, uh, uh, her name is uh, Say Nagatani, and she, um, I think she really stole the show. A two-year-old actor, and she stole the show, and she was just like, uh, and, and it was adorable, adorable. Yeah, and 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 it was just, it was beautiful. And and what it, what um, I thought was so great about it was that he. Uh, he assumed the role of a father and of course, like he wanted the family life and he wasn't. And there's that sequence where he's with his crew and they're going, this is not your daughter. This is not your wife. Right. Ah, oh, okay. Like that. This is, this, it's this stopping this kind of like stop the dinner moment. You know what I mean? Like when they realize that's not, and he's trying to train, it's complicated. I'm trying to explain to you what's going on. And I want the best for these people because I love them. And that's yeah. what made it such a human picture. Um, and yeah. you know, some parts of it, I, I literally, I was getting moist eyed watching it. It was just that good. And yeah, uh, there were moments where you're, you're really thinking to yourself, you know what? <laughs> like, Usually you love seeing just the destruction that he wreaks. You love seeing like, oh, my God, he just took out a building. He just took out a tower. He just took out all these people and all these things. He just right. took that out. But in this version, you're like, don't take out the people that I care about because I exactly. really care about them. This destruction is one thing, but don't hurt the people we love. And I think that's really different from most of the the Godzilla movies that we've seen. This is this is also there's something else too is that when he unleashes his atomic heat, they call it a, they don't call it atomic breath. It's yeah. the whole pantheon calls it now. Their official light is called the heat ray. They don't call it the atomic the heat ray. But what he did was he he his scales his fins sort of all you see this on the toy here. His fins pop up as he's about to to release his atomic breath, and what it's relating to is it's it's the pins being pulled out of an atomic pile it's a safety and so he releases this massive amount of energy and it creates a mini atomic explosion and then there's a sequence of that sequence where he releases it and there's a there's an absolute blast wave and it's carnage it's just oh. carnage and people dying on a mass scale and what is really hits you is when he roars he looks up and he roars you almost think if the creature had intelligence, it's lording, it's 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 celebrating the carnage it's creating, and that is what made this the, the horror of this thing so absolutely real. Is that it's this is a different Godzilla. This is the we've seen the we've seen the Godzilla that saves us and the Godzilla that shakes hands with Jet Jaguar in 1973, and we've seen. Uh, the superhero, the kind of the more hero Godzilla that has come out in the recent legendary pictures movies, and um, and that's all iteration. It's all how it's envisioned. It's all directors envisioning things. Uh, Shin Godzilla back in 2016. That was a, yet another type of movie where something else was. They were just sort of um, uh, the the writers and directors of that were just sort of doing doing a one off and doing their own vision of what their idea of a Godzilla would be. And yeah. now we have uh, Yamazaki's vision of what a Godzilla is. And he actually started this in a movie called Always. And it's a it's one of his earlier movies. And there's a sequence in it, a 1940 sequence in it, where we see the very first, what would be very first CGI Godzilla completely wipe out an area of Tokyo. And the, the effect, the, 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 the it's not as detailed and, and all that, but it's still, it's his thing. And I guess it had been in the back of his mind that he was planning this all the way along. And um, so, you know, you know, I mean, Mizaki had directed a movie called The Returner, which is a fun little time travel movie. If you've never caught that. Um, um, it's like the Terminator meets in Independence Day. It's, it's it, But it's a lot of fun. And then another one called Space Battleship Yamato in 2012. And uh, that's kind. That's a lot of fun, too. And But, uh, I mean, you know, Yamazaki, he's a, he's a really good director. He's a terrific he's director. really talented. And he did this for some say ten million dollars, not the fifteen that, that they're saying, but they're saying it's around ten to twelve, and um, and it's all because he did tight tight storyboarding, tight shots. He knew the up top money was not going to be spent on it, like you see these Marvel comics movies where the the up top money just goes to to stuff they don't even need, and including producers and stuff like that who just sign off on things and get several million bucks for doing so. That doesn't happen in these in Japanese movies. 
what's amazing about what he was able to do with this film is the production value when you're looking at a lot of those effects. Yeah, right. I mean, exactly. I mean, yeah, you could tell like there was there was some you could tell how they were doing things a bit, but even in the the newest, fanciest, shiniest superhero movie, you still see like that awkward CGI moment. But in this movie, in Godzilla Minus One, the work that they did on the effects almost yep. added to the experience because it made it that much more tangible and that much more tactile, like gritty. You could feel the difference in it. And it was just really powerful. And right. I can't believe they made it for for what they actually um, they actually did. The the amount of money they spent is phenomenal. Yeah, Yamazaki wanted to contrast. The first movie happens primarily at night in a lot of scenes. He wanted to contrast that by happen, making this film primarily in the day, and uh, that's why you see Godzilla a lot of time. And, and that that's you know a lot of a lot of the fans like that because a lot of the movies don't do that. They show him a lot of times at night and. Yeah. And that's just done for, you know, uh, in CG talk, it's done because it's actually easier to do. But this time they actually took the time to do him in the day. And I mean, the, the part where he, his tail takes out that building and then he wow. walks by it, his foot kicks the whole thing out. And those the, the TV crews on top and they just they just fall and you're falling with them. Yeah. And, and the, it's and it's an incredible sequence. And um uh, and it happens. I mean, it's it's incredible. It's and this thing is just wild, and it is like on loose, and it is enjoying its carnage. It's doing. Yeah, I mean, you just look at its face, and you really do get the sense of it. It's really, it's really, really well done. Thank you know, you. one of the things that you know when we were chatting before before we actually went live, we were chatting a bit, having fun. Um, we were also talking about the history. Like one thing that they put into this film, which is really well done, is the his like actual historical moments, actual historical footage uh, from the time around, you know, post war, post World War II, um, and they actually put that into the movie, and it gives it that much more. I guess the word is authenticity. Yeah, it is an, it's, it so much. It's editing in it that is so good because two things happen. One, we see how Koichi and and his his adopted family are progressing, and he's getting money coming in. So now he has a motorcycle, and now the house is getting better. And you hear that there's a little bit of beautiful bit of music by Naoki Sato in it, and um, it's just a very nice little guitar riff kind of thing. Um, and then it's contrasted right after that with the bikini explosion of the, uh, the hydrogen bomb going off. And then you see, you know, you hear the roar and you see that I think it's Godzilla is born. And um, <laughs> and uh, the other thing is when they do the microfilm bit, they, they go secret, you know, it's U.S. secret microfilm. And they say General Douglas MacArthur regrets not being able to help the Japanese with this problem because of the Soviet. That was real. That was actually yeah. Godzilla was not evolved, but that's why um, the U.S. kind of pulled away from Japan very quickly because of its proximity to the Soviet Union, and they had just exploded two atomic bombs there. And uh, so now the Cold War was heating up. In reality, so they just dialed Godzilla into it. So, um, and then mm -hmm. they dial into it like that. An American submarine had photographed and tracked and photographed the monster and was destroyed in the process. And I thought that was so well done as like a newsreel. And uh, they they just did a fabulous job of it. And it and it it shows you you yeah. know, it's geopolitical and basically it was the U.S. throwing at Japan under the bus. And um, and they were saying like go out you know you guys got to defend yourselves. They had no ships. They really didn't have much of a anything to defend. You know, so they had these little boats, these little kind of wooden boats, and they were told yeah. to go out and just blow up the mines, destroy the mines. The reality was they were prepping them to defend against this, this creature that was getting closer and closer to Japan. And um, and as the captain sat, sits there and he says, you know, this country's always been, you know, they, they, they send us out to do it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, that's it was very powerful. And they, and they were indeed political statements, but it was done so tactfully and tastefully that it, 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 it used history. It used real history to tell it. And that's, that, was, that was absolutely remarkable. Yeah, you know, and one of the things that I I loved talking about is how art 
is always in conversation with other art. Film is also, also um, whether people think about it or not, in conversation with other films and other social movements of the time or things that are happening. And I loved how you just spoke about how, you know, the, the bomb was just exploded and now they were turning to, the U.S. was turning to Russia in that moment and not able to help Japan out like they should right. have. Right. And and also then we just saw the movie Oppenheimer come out recently. Yep. And so in a way, these two movies are in this weird dialogue together because we saw Oppenheimer from a distance and then we see the bomb from a distance in that movie. And then suddenly we see Godzilla minus one coming out right after Oppenheimer, where we see the impact of the bomb in this in this film that is all in Japanese. And frankly, even though it's got captions and you, it's all in Japanese, I couldn't understand a word of what was being said, but I didn't need to. I understand. I understood that movie from the first frame to the last because of the storytelling was so tight and so on the money that everything I saw on screen made absolute sense. Start the, the, thing that, the thing that was with the subtitling was that they anglified it so that it would be like, you know, uh, they might he might be saying they would squash like bugs or whatever. And mm -hmm. th that's something we would say, okay? But in Japan, it's the sentence structure a little bit different, a little bit differently worded. And so um, it's it has to be anglified so that people can get it and understand it. And you do understand it. And, and it's... Um, you know, I mean, the the Oppenheimer connection, a lot of the fans say if we didn't have Robert J. Oppenheimer, we wouldn't have Godzilla. And um, and uh, really, that was the uh, I mean, Christopher Nolan loved the film, too. He, he, and he did Oppenheimer um, and um, and that both of them dovetail into each other in the same year, coincidentally, which was really yeah. something else. And it really was true. What was going on is what's suggested in Oppenheimer, too. And that is that they 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 invented the bomb to to drop on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. They did that to show the Russians. Is that that's that's there's a theory that it was not just to end the war. It was it was to show the Russians. And this was already going way before that that ended because that was going to end anyway. And um, and so and in doing so, it was you know they created Godzilla with all these atomic tests. And um, and you know it's it's it. He he mutates into this this dinosaur mutates into this massive massive armor plated thing that just gets it just feeds on radiation it just feeds on it and um, you know as is suggested by the end that he's not he's not going away. He no, that's one of the things that I loved was the end is um, they tried over and over to kill him and I just kept thinking to myself. Oh my God, it seems like every time they try to kill him and he powers up and does his atomic thing, he actually seems to grow in size. Right. And um, at the end, I felt like, I, I don't think he's dead. Like, I don't think they got him. Maybe they bought themselves a couple of years. So I'm, I'm personally hoping that there's a Godzilla minus one part two or whatever they would call it. Yeah, apparently there's conflicting information on that. Yamazaki's talking about it, but at the same time, there's also the theory mm -hmm. that prevails that let's see what another director would do in mm -hmm. his own original vision of Godzilla, because they seem to do very well with these like not connected uh, movies like Shin Godzilla, not connected at all with minus one. Um, they they do a lot better with them in the early two thousands. They they had uh, three. They had uh, let's see Godzilla Millennium. They had uh, no Godzilla two thousand. Godzilla Millennium, Godzilla uh, against Mechagodus, and um, GMK Godzilla Mothra King Ghidorah, All Out Monsters Attack. All three were done by different directors and different. They wanted to do like kind of different takes on things and the only the only um commonality was with the events of 1954. yeah makes sense and and then then we went and we had a two-parter and then you know they, they they were finding that having the kind of the lineage there was a, a story arc going on in the 90s godzilla movies and it was a little bit a little bit it varied a little bit hard to keep up with so the idea is let's just see if we what happens when we do godzilla as a um as a a concept envisioned by different new directors younger new directors um and i've always said this if you put 
four artists in a room and say, you put boards all between us all so we can't see each other. And you say, draw Godzilla. He's got to have three rows of spikes. He's got to have, you know, a dinosaur look. And he's got to have his atomic breath. That's the that's the, the the Toho mandate. That's what they want. And my, if you did that, we'd all come up with different Godzillas. Every single one of us would come up with different Godzillas. And and that's an asset it, because he's changed so much. That's why here we are, seventy years later, and he's still big. Yeah, bigger than, bigger than he's ever been. Actually, you know, I love that you mentioned that Godzilla is a concept. Um, yeah. Because it really does seem like in all of the different Godzilla movies that we've seen, including Godzilla Minus One, Godzilla really, in a way, it's kind of like how the superhero movies take on um, the time. They are supposed to embody the time. The, the heroes are supposed to embody the, the heroes that we need today, whatever today needs. Mm -hmm. And Godzilla is almost like, in this film, the monster that embodies the time. In the past, it's he's been different things. Yeah, this is the mindless, warlike Godzilla. I mean, he's upset, not mindless. That's maybe right. not the right way to put it. Right. But um, it, he doesn't make sense to us. He's it, simply it, terrifying. Yeah, he's just terrifying. Uh, you to go back to like the 1970s example, Godzilla versus Megalon. It's kind of a, you know, uh, some of the fans look at it kind of in a weird way. But um, it is a product of its time because it has a superhero in it called Jet Jaguar, because right at the time, 1973, TV and superheroes were huge in Japan. And so they said, okay, well, what can we do? And we're going to make this creature. And then they die. Then eventually they, 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 they had a hero called Jet Jaguar. And they realized as they got to about filming it, he wasn't going to carry the movie. So Shinichi Sakazawa was hired to write Godzilla into the script. And we have Godzilla versus Megalon where he shakes his hand and then he flies and he's kind of got this goofy puppy dog look and things like that. And it's just, it's a product of its time. It's, it's all it is, is a product of its time. And this is what we have now. We have Godzilla. He's what we're seeing now is Godzilla is a product of his time. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's just, he's going to keep on going. I mean, it's just that because he's changed so much, he's just going to keep on going. Yeah. And uh, this movie is tremendous. I mean, it is, it is, uh, I saw it seven or eight times, I think seven times in the theater. I'm definitely going to be seeing it again as soon as it's on streaming. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's apparently they're in talks, and I can't say who, but I've been hearing they're in talks to release it on a, a quite good uh, physical disc. That would be amazing because I would, I would give my money to support this because it's such a good film. And you know, we only have a couple minutes left, and one of the things I always like to do toward the end of, of a review is – actually give my recommendation of you know what what i think people will like about it or who i think would be a good audience for a film i think we've already made it really clear that we both love this film yeah. um so i highly recommend this film to anyone and i think that if if you're uncomfortable listening to a film in another language and trying to keep up with the with the captions or the you know, trying to keep up with the story. I don't think you have to worry about that. And I don't think that, you know, whether you're older or younger, I think you're going to be fine with this film. Maybe little kids might get a little scared, but I think otherwise, I think this is a great, strangely, a great family film because you really do care about the characters and the story is very, very strong. So yeah. Bob, if you had to pick, what were some of your favorite, before we sign off, what were some of your favorite moments of the film that you'd like to kind of leave people oh, with? Oh, boy. Um, I, well, favorite, the human bits were like when he realizes, when he's with, when they're all at the, the, he's with the crew of his ship and they're all eating and they say, wait, she's not, you're not, she's not his mom, her mommy and, and, and you're not daddy and you guys aren't married uh, like that it, 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 everything just stops they go you know they're, and they're looking and they're going like that because that was a big bugaboo you know what i mean and right. um and there's other things that were where the where doc noda literally says this time we're going to do some good and this time we're gonna we're going to um you know this country's treated life far mm. too cheaply and yeah 
that's why the hats come off when Godzilla dies in certain films and Japanese movies, or he's, he's, he's in, in 95, it happened because as destructive as he is, they have this reverence for life. And, um, and, uh, and it's viewed entirely differently. And it's, it, it's, it's a nice view of Japanese life. The whole movie is. And, and of course, when Godzilla appears, when they say a giant creature has come ashore, and he appeared here, dun, 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 the Fukubi theme, you know, you're really brought home. It's really brought home. And then this thing yeah. just goes on an absolute rampage. And the train, when it, when the whole car lands down in the front, uh, you know, in front of the other thing, and the train's got to stop, and he picks it up with his mouth. And she, I mean, just, just, you know, it's just this cascading yeah. action sequence. And you're left thinking to yourself, I've never seen anything like that in in recent years and something. And you see people just getting stomped on. It was just like, and you're not, and it's just this, it's this terrifying monster. It's this absolutely yeah. terrifying monster. And um so and and just the whole uh the whole camaraderie where they where they all decide, you know, we're gonna do something about this problem. Yeah. And you know, the science in it was all correct, the freon gas where they they strap Freon around him and sink him to the bottom. And then they have to go to plan B. And then, you know, unless, I mean, all of that was so well thought out. And yeah. um, and the only thing that I will say is that in the Shinzen fighter, apparently another friend of mine pointed out that they didn't have ejection seats in that time. And so, you know, there's a, there's a se sequence where they put an ejection seat in it. And that's a spoiler. I hope you didn't, but but uh, they didn't have that at that time, so that's a that's a very big plot point, and it just it's it's a interesting take on characters and their kind of reverence of life is what it is, and and it's yeah, weird. I do love how they they kind of bring it full circle. They start out with the kamikaze, and then they end with like finding a way to save his life. Right. And I thought that was a really beautiful full circle that really brought home the fact that. Not only did the filmmakers care about these characters, but we cared about them and they found a way to pull that together. And I, I really deeply appreciated that. Yeah. So this film, it is, it, it is the, it's the film that I can recommend to people that don't even go to see Godzilla movies. <laughs> uh, and, and that's, that's the, you know, everybody's saying, was it Godzilla minus one? I was like, Oh yeah. It's like, well, you know, no, it's 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 uh, it's it, it, it's something everybody can see. And if yeah. and, and when you come away and you really have an understanding, not just of that kind of movie Godzilla, but you also have an understanding of a ja of of a sli uh, of Japanese culture. You really do. Absolutely, I mean, very very good. I Highly mean. recommend it. So we are at the end of our time. Thank you so much, Bob. It is always so much fun to talk with you. So I'm and, delighted um, that we had this opportunity to talk about something we both oh, really love. So thank right. you. Alrighty. And thanks to everybody who tuned in and who's watching it afterwards. Um, be sure to click subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review and discussion on Godzilla minus one. And I guess we'll see you, see you again soon for some more reviews. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.